Okay. Uh, dear brothers and sisters uh, in Christ, uh, uh, last few classes, we tested the important part about uh, soul. So what happens to soul uh, when a man dies? So the Bible says that the man, uh, when he dies, the soul also dies. So this one we have clearly understood uh, from the scriptures. And uh, after that one, we saw uh, what is the meaning of soul in the Bible. And uh, some other misconceptions also we saw. Once uh, when a man uh, dies, his soul goes here and there and uh, all those things. So is it true or is it false? Can the dead uh, rise and come back to their home? What of the ghost uh, stories and all the things we saw from the Bible? So apart from that one, so till now, we have covered a uh, 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 so many parts. But now, a very important uh, part we are going to see is that uh, uh, what uh, the Bible uh, uh, says uh, about uh, so many, uh, you see, uh, what do you say, stories or uh, so many narrations given in the Bible that tend to show that the soul doesn't die and uh, which seems to be contradicting of what all we have studied till now. So, it is our responsibility at this time to go through all those uh, scripture evidences uh, which give us an idea that uh, soul uh, uh, doesn't die. So, how many incidents are there? If you see in the Bible, uh, dear Buddha, there are nearly seven such incidents in the Bible which give us the idea that the uh, soul doesn't die. So, it's uh, our responsibility to go through all these parts one by one. Uh, uh, so, uh, we are going to see one by one uh, uh, about this conception. And the first one uh, is given to us in First Samuel 28 chapter. So First Samuel 28 chapter, uh, if you can uh, open the Bibles uh, just to uh, see uh, what actually happened in First Samuel 28 chapter. If you see First Samuel 28 chapter, here yeah, King Saul goes to meet a witch. You see? Uh, and to contact the dead Samuel. Now why, why was it necessary that uh, King Samuel, Samuel, King Saul should contact dead Samuel? So if you see, the Philistines came uh, for a war upon Israel and uh, you see, the King Saul was uh, totally uh, confused what to do because uh, seeing that huge uh, army of the Philistines, uh, he trembled a lot uh, and he feared uh, uh, losing the battle. So, he did not know what to do. That's the reason he went and contacted uh, a witch. So, let us read First Samuel 28, chapter verse 4 and 5. brother. First Samuel 28, chapter verse 4 and 5. Uh, brother Santosh or Brother Ashish can read. Uh, I will read, brother. Brother Santosh cannot read. See, okay, okay, so I will brother. read. Okay. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Sunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gibeah. And when Saul saw the best of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. Thank you, brother. So, seeing that the uh, Philistines army uh, Saul was uh, totally afraid. He did not know what to do. Usually, whenever there is a war in Israel, the kings of Israel used to do one common thing. Uh, that is, they contact God and see whether uh, they will win in this victory or not. Uh, so, here also, uh, King Saul actually tried to contact uh, God uh, to see what would happen. But, uh, as uh, Saul was totally you see, rejected by God. God did not answer him in any of these ways. Read verse 6, brother. First Samuel 28, 6, brother. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. See, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor Urim, nor Turim, or by the prophets. So, when the Lord did not answer him in any of the way, you see, K 
King Saul had no other option because by that, that time, you see, the prophet Samuel was already dead. So the prophet Samuel was already dead. And uh, when he was a good king, he had actually removed all these uh, uh, wicked people who have contact with the familiar spirit, the civil spirit. Read verse 3, brother. Huh? First Samuel 23. Now Samuel was dead and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Rama, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Okay. So you, you see, uh, you see, uh, God had rejected, uh, you see, King Saul. So, and uh, that is the reason that uh, Samuel did not uh, meet him uh, until uh, he was dead. And uh, by this time, what had happened, if you see, Samuel the prophet was already dead. Now, we know uh, what had actually happened uh, in the life of uh, King, uh, you see, Saul. So, he was disobedient to God in two times. One was that uh, even uh, when uh, Samuel told him to wait, King Saul did not wait for the Lord. But instead of that one, he offered a sacrifice to the Lord and uh, hence he was rejected as a king. You see? So that was the first incident. And the second incident uh, uh, is given to us in First Samuel uh, uh, 15 chapter, uh, verse 22 and uh, verse 23. Okay? So there you see, uh, God had commanded King Saul to slaughter all the Amalekites. But unfortunately, as God commanded, King Saul did not obey completely God's words. Hence, he was rejected to be a king. So then what happened, if you see, God took away the Holy Spirit, you see, from uh, uh, King uh, Saul and a wicked spirit came and bothered him. Read First Samuel sixteen fourteen. First Samuel sixteen fourteen. Uh, Peter, brother, can you read? Is it possible for you to read? Uh, brother Peter. Okay. How are you, brother? Are you doing good? Yeah, I'm good. Thank After you. so many days, uh, nice to see you. Thank you, Samuel. Good, brother. Brother, can you read First Samuel sixteen fourteen, brother? Is it okay? Okay. Okay, please. Sixteen fourteen. Hmm. Okay. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. See, a wicked spirit, a distressing spirit came and troubled him. So this itself is a clear proof that. Uh, Saul was already rejected as a king. And we know that uh, David was anointed uh, in this meantime. So, when uh, God rejected him totally, when he had no other option to find out what would happen in the warfare, he went and contacted a witch who could uh, speak to the dead and find out what would happen in the war. You see? And this was totally against uh, eh, God's uh, will. Because when uh, he was a good king, you see, when Saul was a good, he had uh, actually killed all this, uh, uh, you see, uh, persons who have uh, this uh, familiar spirit uh, and do this uh, witchcraft and all those things. That was just given in verse 3. But here, if you see, in verse 7, now he violates uh, more of God's commands and goes to meet this witch. Read verse 7. First Samuel 28, 7, brother. Huh? Then said Saul into his servant, Seek me a woman that hath a family spirit, that I may go to her and injure of her. And this servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that had a familiar spirit at uh, in, in indoor. In. Very good. Brother. So, this was totally against the law of the God also. When God gave the law to the Israel, Lord had clearly told 
that uh, you should not have such women or such persons in the promised land. Read Deuteronomy 18 chapter 9 to 12. Uh, Ashish brother, can you read Deuteronomy 18 chapter 9 to 12? Okay, brother. <coughs> when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God give, give thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son of his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consultor, a familiar spirit, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that would do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God just drive them out from before thee. Very good, brother. So because of these things, the Lord your God would drive them out before you. So why did not God retain these people in the land of Canaan? Was that uh, the things what they did was uh, displeasing to God? And uh, read uh, two more verses in Leviticus 19:31 and Leviticus 20 verse 6. Uh, Peter, brother, can you read, brother? Uh. Okay. Regard not them that have familiar spirit, neither seek after wizard to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. 20 chapter 6 And the soul that returned after such, uh, such, such as have familiar spirit and after wizard to go a warring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and mm -hmm. will cut him off from among these people. Okay, we'll cut him out uh, from among the people. So, so God clearly told that you should not be doing all these things. But here if you see, King Saul violated God's commandments, you see, and went and contacted his witch. So when he went to the witch, witch asked, okay, whom do you want me to bring from the dead? Whom do you want me to speak? Then Saul told, bring me back Samuel. Read verse 11, brother. First Samuel 28, 11, brother. Then said the woman, Who shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Bring me up Samuel. Now, uh, she did some, uh, you see, uh, Jantar Mantra and all. Uh, immediately, uh, you see, what happened? Uh, uh, some person was brought. Uh, uh, and uh, seeing this one, the king asked, oh, what are you seeing? Please tell me. What was the reply of that witch? Verse 13, brother. Huh? Okay. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sowest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Mm. Immediately she replied, I saw God ascending out of the earth. Then uh, immediately uh, Saul asked, you please tell me how is that uh, person to look at. Uh, and then immediately she began to describe the person who is coming out. Read verse 14, brother. What did the, the witch say further? Huh? And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, An old man comes up, and he is covered with a mantle and soul. Perceived that it was Samuel, and he stopped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. You see? Now she asks, huh? What was the reply she gave? She told, huh? What is the what is the form? Saul asked her. She told her, huh? What did she tell? Did she tell that Samuel is coming up? No. She never mentioned that Samuel is coming up. What was the reply? She said, an old man cometh up. 
and he is covered with a mantle. You see, a old man is coming up, covered with a total, you see, mantle, a full dress. And immediately, Saul thought that it must be Samuel. Because he was eagerly trying to meet and discuss with Samuel. So if some old person wearing the mantle, you see, was uh, supposed to come up, uh, immediately he thought, uh, you see, he assumed, uh, you see, suddenly that uh, it must be none other than, uh, who? None other than uh, uh, Samuel the prophet. Okay, next, what happened? Uh, next, uh, uh, read verse 15, brother. Huh? And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Hmm. 16. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me? Departed from thee and is become thin in me. Hmm. Then said, uh, What did uh, Samuel reply? Samuel said, uh, because uh, Lord has become my enemy, I don't know what to do in the warfare. So I want to speak to dead Samuel and know what is going to happen in the war. That is the reason I was uh, called you to speak to dead Samuel. Now, okay. Now, uh, what was the conversation between this uh, person who came, you see, the old person with a mantle and between King Saul? Read verse uh, 19, brother. First Samuel 28, 19, brother. Huh? Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the hand of the Palestine uh, and to Mero. Shall thou the son with me? The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Palestine. Okay. So and what did uh, oh okay on minute, brother? And uh, what was the reply? You see, uh, Samuel gave us that uh, uh, tomorrow uh, Lord shall uh, give you into the hands of the Philistines and tomorrow you and your sons uh, will be with me. Okay? That means tomorrow war is going to happen. You're going to lose the war. All of you are going to die. Even all your sons are also going to die. That's what uh, this uh, dead Samuel tells us. Uh, but uh, just think, if it is really uh, the prophet uh, Samuel is speaking, is he really the prophet Samuel who is speaking? If you see in the Bible, I don't want to read this verse, First Samuel 15.35 it says, Samuel never met King Saul and never spoke to King Saul. Why? Because the Lord had uh, departed from uh, King Saul. Imagine Saul and Samuel never spoke. Samuel never spoke to Saul. You see, when he was alive, do you think he will come and speak after uh, his death? I don't think so at all. And moreover, if this was the true Samuel who rose from the dead and spoke, whatever he told or whatever he prophesied, he should have completely been fulfilled. Was it fulfilled? Did it exactly happen as uh, did Samuel spoke? Let us see what does the Bible say. Same way, war happened. Israel also lost the war. But not all the sons of Saul were dead. One son of Saul was alive. Read 1 Samuel 31.6. 1 Samuel 31.6. So Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor bear, and all his men that same day together. Mm. See, Saul died, and three sons. Three sons died, but not all of his sons. One of his sons was alive. His name is Ishbosheth, and he ruled for two years in Israel. Read Second Samuel 2 10, brother. Hmm. Ishubu said Saul's son was 40 years old when he began to regain over Israel and regain two years, but the house of Judah followed David. See, he ruled for two years. 
two years is ruled. That means it's not die immediately. Huh? You see, after many years only, who died? This Ishposheth was dead. Second Samuel 4, it is given. No need to read. Okay. Just imagine, if it was truly God's prophecy, it should have been fulfilled 100 out of 100%. But was it fulfilled? No. Do we have any pro prophecy in the Bible which is partially fulfilled? No. All of the prophecies are exactly fulfilled 100 out of 100 percent, point to point, pin to pin. Not even a small mistake. Like for example, the prophecy of uh, uh, Elia concerning Jezebel. You see, she falsely accused Naboth and killed him. And Naboth uh, was stoned to death at the, you see, gate of uh, Jezreel. And what happened? The dogs came and licked the blood of Naboth. Eli, Elijah, Elijah saw this one. Now, what did he prophesy? He prophesied clearly saying uh, that uh, as uh, uh, the dogs are licking the blood of Naboth in exactly the same place, uh, what will happen? Uh, you see, the dogs also shall lick thy blood it exactly fulfilled point to point, dear brethren. Exactly, without any small minute chance also, it happened. Jezebel was thrown atop from the palace. She fell at the exact same place. And what happened? You see, huh? the dog came and licked her. You see, her blood. So it was fulfilled 100 out of 100%. This is God's prophecy. But here you see, this prophecy was not exactly fulfilled. You see, then what is the meaning of this one? Dear Bhadran, you see, this is a clear proof that this is not uh, God speaking. Then who is speaking it? You see, then how can, uh, you see, uh, the devil know about the future? Yes, of course, he can know about the future. That is not a great thing. Like, for example, whenever a government comes to power, you see, the government makes a budget. For the fire plan. You see, they will be staying for fire. And fire, they make a plan. You see, and they move according to the plan. You see? And uh, majority, 90 to 90% is exactly fulfilled as per the budget. Now, when they are able to guess for another five years, why can't the devil guess for what will is going to happen tomorrow? You can definitely guess, uh, isn't it? Like, for example, uh, uh, can we... Uh, guess uh, what is going to happen in our life uh, uh, in tomorrow, day after tomorrow? Yes, we can definitely uh, tell uh, what is going to happen in uh, tomorrow, day after tomorrow. You see, I, like for example, I'll tell my, uh, you see, uh, tomorrow's uh, schedule. I'll tell you exactly. You see, tomorrow I'll wake up at uh, uh, 6.30, 7 o'clock. Then uh, I'll clean my entire uh, house. I'll, uh, then uh, for a uh, uh, prayer, we will cleanse the entire uh, prayer hall, then uh, we will prepare the place for worship then uh, all the brethren will come, we will start uh, you see, uh, worshipping the Lord around 10 o'clock and uh, finish by uh, 12 o'clock, then we will have fellowship with the brethren till 1 o'clock then uh, after 1 o'clock uh, uh, I will have my dinner, sorry, lunch so I will finish my lunch around uh, uh, 1 30, 2 o'clock then uh, I'll sit and study for a uh, few hours. Then 4 o'clock, uh, I have a class. I'll take the class from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Then again, we have one more class from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. After that one, again, one more class is there from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. And from uh, 9.30 to 10.30, I'll have my dinner. Then uh, sit and study for a uh, few hours and uh, sleep at 12 o'clock in the midnight. Then again, wake up early in the morning around 7 o'clock and go to my job. See, this is our schedule. Now, whatever I told, do you think that uh, this schedule will be fulfilled? Yes, almost 90% exactly it will happen. So, small, minute, uh, here and there changes might happen. Okay, that might be for, uh, you see, 10%, 20%. Okay, just because uh, we can guess what is going to happen in our life, uh, do you think that we are going to be prophets? Do, do, do you think that uh, it is God's words? No, dear Budhrayana. See, we can guess something what is going to happen in future, even in our life to a certain extent. And what about the devil? Can't he guess? Yes, he can guess. He clearly knew that God has withdrawn from King Saul. 
then what will happen if he goes to warfare? You see, no need to inquire with anyone. He himself knows. Uh, King Saul himself knows that he is going to lose the war. He just wanted to know uh, whether uh, it, uh, God is going to save him or not. But uh, you see, everybody knew that he is definitely going to die. There is no doubt about it. There is no need and there was no necessary that you should, he should go and ask these things from uh, from whom? Uh, from uh, which? Uh, dear brethren. And uh, brother, this is all okay. But how did a uh, dead person come there? You see, you observe there, there a dead person did not come. Eh? She told that a person is coming back uh, from uh, the earth. You see, uh, she told gods are ascending from earth. Uh, gods, where uh, gods will come from earth? They are actually in heaven. They should be coming from heaven. Huh? First of all, she is a witch and she is telling lies uh, that some person is coming. Even though it is true, did uh, uh, King Saul saw Samuel? Uh, no, you see in the Bible, he never saw whom? Samuel. She gave the description. A old person wearing a mantle is coming from the earth. Hearing this one, he assumed that this must be none other than our prophet Samuel. You see, this was a clear proof that this is of the devil. Okay, even if a person comes also, uh, even if he is visible for uh, that witch, uh, you see, this is not a great thing. Uh, today, we have the technology of hologram. See, you can see here, uh, uh, that's a hologram technology. A magnetic electronic device is uh, worn in your hand. If you switch on the device, next to you, exactly same ditto, everything. What all you are having, the same features, uh, the next to you on duplicate will stand. It will be ditto exact, but it's not a real, uh, but it's just a Hologram, this technology, we have it today. Even, uh, you see, in a great football World Cup, uh, they had the laser display in the sky. Naked sky in a dark sky. You see, they showed beautiful, uh, you see, uh, motion picture. How did it uh, do the picture? They began to beam the laser from the earth. Uh, you see, the lasers uh, screened everything on the sky. Do you think that everything happened really in the sky? No. That was a virtual, uh, you see, uh, a laser show. Similarly, dear brethren, we have all these technologies with us today. But Satan, who is the prince of the power of the air, who is the father of lies, he knows how to deceive, whom to deceive, when to deceive, and which way to deceive. So he exactly, dear brethren, you see, uses all this technology to deceive mankind. This is what he did with King Saul. Hence, dear brethren, this example can't be taken to prove that the dead don't die. The dead go to here and there and dead can come back to life. They can come and speak. They can come and visit. No, dear brethren, this is all the works of the devil. That's the reason God told. You should not encourage any witchcraft. You see, Huh? In your nation. They should be totally, you see, thrown out. Therefore, dear brethren, so this is the first proof. Uh, this can be taken to prove that the soul doesn't die. While the Bible says, so many scriptures says that the soul clearly dies. Okay. Now the next example is uh, Prophet Moses and Elia appear into Jesus. So let us read Matthew 17 chapter 1, 2, and 3. Uh, read with that, please. Okay, Matthew chapter 17, 1, 2, 3. And after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up onto a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his force his face did shine as the sun, and his uh, raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias taking with them, with him, sorry. Hmm. Take, talking with him. Okay. Now, if the dead are not raised, if the dead are going to be raised only at the second coming of Jesus, now did Moses and Elias come here? 
Correct. Now, if the soul dies, if no person are coming back alive till the second coming of Jesus, then how did Moses come back to life here? Now, how did Elia come back to life? And how did they speak with Jesus? Correct. Huh? How? How did this happen? Now, what is the meaning of this one? Huh? We will see the answer from the Bible. For the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. If you have any questions, we need to search the answers from the Bible itself. Okay. Now, first of all, tell me, now how did uh, uh, the disciples uh, recognize that this was Moses and this was Elia? How did they recognize? Did they ever see the photo of uh, Moses or Elia? How did they recognize? Tell me. Tell me, Peter brother, Santosh brother, Vishnu brother. Scripture. How? Through? Scriptures. But the scriptures was written later, no? See, all the scriptures, whatever is written, it is written after the death of Jesus. Sir. Not before Jesus. Sir. Not when they were alive. Not when actually this thing was uh, taking place lively. How did they recognize? Try. Try to attempt and uh, give an answer. Huh? Santosh Buddha, Vishnu Buddha, I Peter Buddha. Through, huh? through preaching or Someone ah. tell through prophecy. Ah, how? Correct. You are very near. Uh, Bishnu brother, any idea? Uh, I'm thinking. <laughs> Think. Okay, I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. I'll give everybody one clue. The answer is given in verse 3 itself. Read verse 3 and tell me. Peter brother, read verse 3. Let me see who is going to answer after reading this verse. Seven. Hmm. Seventeen three. Seventeen three. Hmm. Just then. Hmm. Just then there appeared before them Moses and El Elijah, Elijah talking with Jesus. Hmm. Now tell me. The answer is here only. How did they recognize that this was Moses and Elia? Very easy answer. I'll tell you. Oh, Vishnu brother, any idea? Um, not a... Okay. See, very simple. What does the verse say? Behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elia. Talking uh, with him. Talking with Jesus. So they right. both were talking with Jesus. Now was they talking? Huh? Moses would have addressed, Oh Lord, how are you Lord? And uh, uh, Jesus would have replied, Oh Moses, how are you? Isn't it? Huh? And he would have addressed <laughs> Moses saying, Moses, you would have seen Elia and uh, said, Oh Elia, you mm. would have called them by name. So that is the meaning of talking, talking, uh, conversation. The way they talk to each other, the disciples understood that this is Moses, this is Elia. So it was by conversation. Anyway, okay, now let us come to the point. The point is that if the dead rise not, then how did Moses and Elia appear? Tell me. How did Moses and Elia appear? What is this one? Okay. The answer is given to us in verse 9 itself. Read verse 9, brother. As, and as they come down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, tell the vision to no man. Ah, tell the vision. 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 Vision means what? Is it a real thing? Ah? No, that is not a real thing. Vision is a vision. See, yes, uh, see, huh? I also saw vision, brother. Oh, yo, in my vision, I saw Abraham. Huh? I have seen Moses in my vision. You see, in my vision, I have seen huh? Jonathan. I have seen David. I have hmm. seen King Saul. 
I have seen huh? Samson also. You see, I have seen Jesus also in my vision. Which is mm. that vision? What is that vision? Huh? Television. What vision? Television. In television, <laughs> we can see, no? Huh? If you play Ten Commandments, we'll see Moses. If you put a Samson picture, I can see Samson. Is it real? Ah? Huh? No, this is all, you see, not real, Devadan. This is television, technology vision. In those mm. days, there was no technology. Only vision was there. This is all vision. This is all not real, brethren. You see, so similarly, what Apostles saw here was a vision. That was not a real Elia or Moses appearing to them. No, is there any such visions in the Bible? Yes. We have studied the vision about uh, Daniel 2nd chapter, 7th chapter. You all remember? Huh? Remember, see, uh, king saw a vision, a multi-metallic structure, head of gold, arms of silver, which is stomach and thigh of uh, brass, the legs of uh, iron, feet of clay and iron. You see, this is what real. Uh, this is a vision. Same dream came to Daniel. It was a vision. So many visions are there in the book of Zechariah, Ezekiel. Lot of, lot of visions are there. You see, similarly, here what Jesus showed to the disciples was a vision. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of this vision? You see, Moses represents the Old Testament prophets and uh, Elia represents the church. You see? So, here actually Jesus was giving them the picture of the kingdom. So what exactly would happen when Jesus would rule on this earth, when Jesus is going to return at the second coming, when Jesus is going to rule for a thousand years, what will be the condition of this earth? Who will rule on this earth? That's what he showed them on a vision. On the left hand was Moses, on the right hand was Elia. So Moses in the Bible represents the house of servants. Hebrews, uh, you see, third chapter, one to six, uh, you see, and uh, in the Old Testament also, you see, so many references are there, you see, that represents the Old Testament faithful warriors. Huh? And uh, Elia, who does Elia represent? Uh, Elia represents the church. How, you see, lot of uh, similarities between Elia. Elia, huh? he wanted to convert the people to God. Similarly, what is the church doing? They are all bringing the people to God, telling them to convert their hearts. Huh? You see, not conversion physically. You see, conversion of the hearts uh, to worship the one true God. Uh, but uh, who opposed? Uh, huh? Elia. Elia was opposed by Jezebel and Ahab. Today, who are oppositions to this preaching the word of God? So, Elia ran away. He ran away, afraid. He was hiding somewhere. Secretly, he was alive. You see, who gave them the food? Crow. God did not leave him alone. Hmm? Ultimately, who won? Gilia won. So, similarly, the church is secretly working its work. Ultimately, who will win? You see, God's uh, true church will win. That is the picture of his God's kingdom. Anyway, we will be studying all these things in the coming uh, days also. But this is a clear proof that uh, this is a vision. This is not a direct incident that happened. Okay. Now let us come to the third point. Okay. The third point uh, is uh, the thief on the cross. Let us read Luke 23rd chapter 43rd verse. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, the day to day shall thou be with me in paradise. See, Jesus said to the thief on the cross, Verily, verily I say unto thee, today shall thou be with me in paradise. Everybody thinks that the thief on the cross died the very day and his soul was taken to heaven. So you also repent. Even if you repent today, you will go to heaven. You shall be saved. Okay. Now, what did Jesus say to the thief here? Today, today you will be with me in paradise. Today itself you will be with me in paradise. Okay. Now, Jesus did uh, 
he go to paradise the same day did jesus go to the paradise the same day no jesus was in the grave for 3 days he was resurrected on the third day if he himself did not go to the paradise the same day how can he make a false promise to the thief that you shall be with me in paradise today how can he go today correct now read acts 10:40 him god raise up the third day and so him openly see god raised jesus on the third day so how can he go to heaven okay first point the second point many you think that uh, uh, the thief fast forgiveness uh, to jesus where is it given the thief fast forgiveness uh, to jesus no he did not ask forgiveness sir. so many people misuse this one and tell even if you repent today even if you ask forgiveness today even if you surrender to jesus today you shall be saved did he eh, ask forgiveness is it so easy to go to heaven that at the very dying moment <clears throat> you repent and go to heaven dear brethren if that is the case at the last dying moment we can go to heaven that why should we study the bible let us leave all the bible leave everything we will come to know when we are going to die at least one minute one second before at that moment lord please forgive we can ask him immediately we will take us to heaven no thief is gone to heaven we are not so worst as a thief no if we can remember the last moment we will also go to heaven no now why all these things are required why so many epistles are written to the churches why did the apostle paul say work out your salvation with fear and trembling dear brethren because this is not the way to go to heaven this is not the way to go to kingdom of god how should we go to kingdom of god read Acts fourteen twenty two. Acts fourteen twenty two. Hmm. Confirming the souls of the disciple, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, hmm. and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the God. See, through much tribulation we should enter into the kingdom of God. Not just like that only. Superly, sum simply. Bed of roses. Believe in Jesus. Automatically, a seat is reserved for you in heaven. No. Where does the Bible say? What does it say? Through much tribulation, you should enter the kingdom of God. It's not so easy that you can just like you know, go to heaven. Okay. Mm. Next point. Now, did the the thief ask forgiveness? What did the thief ask? Now, what did Jesus reply? You should study that one. No. Read verse forty-two. What did the thief ask? Read verse forty-two, brother. and he said unto jesus lord remember me when uh, when the comes uh, comes into the kingdom ah what did the thief ask brother did he ask forgiveness of sins did he ask lord please take me to the heaven did he ask did he ask for forgiveness of his all his sins huh did he ask for his uh, forgiveness for all the theft he has done all the murder he has done you see did he ask for forgiveness for all the sins he has done no not even one confession no confession at all but what did he ask lord remember me when you come into your kingdom correct now now first of all how did the thief know that jesus is the king was jesus a king jesus was a king or not yes or no oh yo yo you also don't know was jesus a king yes or no yes king of king king of kings when now when he died on the cross was he king now he is king of kings but when he died on the cross was he a king doubt yes he was king but no one is accepted him ah a... we lot asked the same question are you a king Now what did Jesus say? Yes, I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom will come. It will come in the future, isn't it? He accepted. Yes, I am a king, but not of this time. That is what the thief is asking. See, you told no, you are king. You are king of some time. When you come in your kingdom, when you are going to be king of your kingdom, please remember me. 
Okay. And moreover, upon Jesus, there was a board put I-N-R-I. What is the meaning of it? Huh? Jesus, the king of the Jews. The board was there, no? He read the board and clearly understood. Oh, oh he, this person is claiming to be a king. Okay. Sir, you seem to be king. Okay. At least remember when you come in the kingdom. Now, okay. Now, for this question of the thief, what is the right answer? The thief asked, please remember me in your kingdom. Now, what should be the reply of Jesus? Tell me. What did the key thief ask? Thief asked, sir, please remember me. Now, what should Jesus say? What should Jesus say to the thief? Tell me. When the thief asked to remember him, Jesus' proper reply would be, okay, I will remember. Correct, no? What did he ask? He asked to remember. What should Jesus have replied? He should have replied, okay, I will remember you when I come in my kingdom. But what was the reply of Jesus? The reply of Jesus was totally different. Jesus, instead of saying, okay, I will remember, he told, today you shall be with me in paradise. Now, how is it possible? Today, that day, he himself did not go. And moreover, you see, Jesus died the same day. But do you think the thief died the same day? He did not die the same day. They were alive on the thief. Uh, so they were alive on the cross. That is the reason their knees were broken. You see? So they might die soon. They did not die the same day. They have then, uh, you see, then what is the confusion in this verse? What is the exact understanding of this verse? See, they have then, this uh, Luke uh, uh, 23 43, there is a punctuation mark. Now, where is the punctuation mark? You observe here. You see? Huh? The punctuation mark is before today. Yeah, uh, I'll read it for you. Huh? See, the punctuation mark in the Bible is uh, this way, before today. If somebody reads this one, it is like this, it comes out like this. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Now what is the meaning of that one? I am saying to you, Today only you will be with me in paradise. You see, that's the understanding uh, this verse gives. But just put the punctuation mark after today and read. The meaning is totally different. How does it come? It says, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee today, Verily I say unto thee today, Shall thou be with me in paradise? That means what? I am saying to you today itself. Today only I am telling you. Today only I am speaking to you. That you shall be with me in paradise. When? Not that you shall be with me. Today itself in paradise. Because I am only not going to paradise today. I am uh, going to grave. I am going to be dead for three days. So how can I make you a false promise? Sir? This is what exactly and correctly Jesus told uh, Devudran. See, one comma, one word here and there makes a lot of differences. Some people might think, no, brother, this is not the reason. Just imagine, <clears throat> what did God say to Adam in the Garden of Eden? Read Genesis 2.17, brother. Huh? Genesis 2.17, brother. Huh? But of the tree... But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, thereof thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. Now what did God say? You shall surely die. die. Okay. Now what did Satan say? Read Genesis 3, 4, brother. And the serpent said unto the woman, I shall surely die. I huh? shall not surely die. <laughs> see, brother, one word. You see, one word changes the entire concept. You shall surely not. 
Shetar only added that word not in between. So what happened? What God told totally changed opposite direction. See, so many, so much of power, a small punctuation mark is having. I'll give you an example. See, one typist was typing. The judge gave a judgment. Judge gave a judgment saying, kill him. Kama, not spare him. But the typist, while he, while he was typing, you know, where did he put the punctuation mark? Instead of putting the punctuation mark before not, he put the punctuation mark after not. Now what happened? The sentence totally changed. The judge actually told, kill him. Kama, not spare him. That means kill him, don't spare him. But the typist, he typed, kill him not. Kama, spare him. That means what? Don't kill him. Spare him, leave him. You see? A matter of life and death. Similarly, here also this is a punctuation mark. Now, who made this punctuation mark? You see, originally in the Bible, there is no chapter division, there is no verse division, there is no punctuation mark at all in the original Bible. These are all things that were done recently in 1551 AD by Cardinal Caro, who made the verse division. You see, the Cardinal Caro made the chapter division. And uh, Robert Stephenson made the verse division. See, later on only came the punctuation mark. Before that one, there is no punctuation mark, no chapter division, no verse division. You see, nothing was there. Completely literal. A to Z, starting to end, right like this one only go. There is no punctuation mark in the original Bible. These are all, you see, made by the translators. The mistakes made by the translators. Now, okay. Now, why did uh, Jesus promise uh, such a thing that you shall, huh? but I am saying to you today, that you shall be with me in paradise. Now, what was Jesus trying to say? You see, Jesus was on the cross. There was nobody to comfort him. Just imagine the pathetic condition. Jesus died on the cross. More than 12 hours is not taken, not even food, not even one comfort words, uh, not even one soothing words for him. Everybody are scolding, beating him, you see, and he's made to carry the heavy cross. You see, he's totally tired. Dear brethren, he could not even speak also. For three hours, he just spoken seven words. Imagine, will we just keep quiet for three hours, just speaking seven words? We won't be able to stand in the bus for one position. We'll be keeping on changing. Why? But Jesus was nailed to the cross. Imagine such a terrible condition. So much of, uh, you see, insects, uh, maggots would have come and tortured him. You see, full blood over the place. All the blood is clotted. His vision is not clear. He is totally thirsty. The entire uh, system is dried. This was is clearly given in Psalms 22. You see, there was nobody to go speak to him comfortably. Everybody are coming and teasing him. See, he trusted in God. If you trust in God, come down from the cross, we'll believe you. If you are God's son, come down. How painful it would be for Jesus, dear brethren. Everybody is scolded. A thief also scolded. But this thief, he said, no, hey, don't speak like this. This person doesn't seem like to be a thief. We are thief. We are suffering for our wrongdoings. But this person doesn't seem to be like that. He seems to be a righteous person. Don't tease him. Don't scold him. Leave him alone. You see, that word itself was a very great comfort for Jesus. Read Psalm 69 20, brother. Read Psalm 69 20. 69 20. Hmm. Stone has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I look for sympathy, but there was no one. For comforters, but I found no one. I found, I seek for comforter, but I found none. You see, full, my heart is broken, full of heaviness. I ask for pity, none to comfort me. See the feelings of Jesus, dear brethren. Jesus' feelings, he is having these things in his mind. If somebody next to him spoke one word, sir, leave him alone. He is not a culprit like us. Sir. That itself was a very soothing thing to Jesus. The thief requested, sir, please remember me in your kingdom, sir. Jesus should have exactly replied, 
yes i will remember you in my kingdom but here what they have done is that they use the word paradise so paradise means everybody thinks oh heaven paradise means heaven huh eh? paradise means heaven ah huh? who told you paradise is heaven is it given in the bible you show me one verse in the bible which says that paradise is heaven i will agree for all the things whatever you say you see you can't prove it from the bible at all you see the paradise word paradise you see huh is actually huh from the greek word paradios paradios means you know what is a park it is not heaven you see but is it given in the bible yes sir. for the bible bible is a dictionary i show you where is the paradise sir. read revelation 27 brother revelation 27 brother ha huh? he that had uh, an ear let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches to him that overcome who will i give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of paradise of god ha huh? midst of the paradise of god in the middle of the paradise of paradise of god what is there brother what is there peter brother Three. ah Three what is there peter brother read again meet here fully read again observe the verse and read again brother he that had an ear let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches to him that overcome will i give to eat of the trees of life which is in the mid midst of the paradise of god ah uh, now you tell me what is there in the middle of the paradise of god tree of life very good brother excellent brother super tree of life now you tell me where was this tree of life originally in the bible is it given in the bible yes i think yes very good where brother in mm, garden very good uh, brother which garden uh adam and eve very good garden of eden read genesis 29 very good brother excellent see this is the way we study the bible here a little there a little seek from the bible not from google not from any vision dream mm. prophets no bible is his own dictionary god is his own interpreter everything should be open and seen and shown from the bible not from something uh, you see outside the bible read brother genesis 29 and out of the ground made the lord god to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the mid midst of the garden aha uh -huh. and the tree huh. of knowledge of good and evil ah uh, see brother the tree of life also in the middle of the garden in the middle of the paradise of god so everything both are one and the same here the garden of god and the paradise of god are the same thing therefore if you see that the paradise the greek word for paradise used here is paradios paradios actually means park not heaven okay you can search it from uh, mr strong's concordance dictionary is there available online you see that means uh, edenic condition what did the uh, thief ask remember me when your kingdom remember me in your kingdom when is jesus kingdom is going to come on this earth at his second coming when he is going to return the second coming he is going to establish his kingdom on the earth visibly on the earth now how will that kingdom be jesus taught us his prayer our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name may thy kingdom come not that may we will all come to heaven no 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 may thy kingdom come may thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven so god's will god's kingdom shall be done on earth when it is done on earth how will the earth be it will be same like the edenic condition it will be same eden park this is what jesus replied this is the exact answer for the question of the thief thief asked 
remember me you see when you come in your kingdom jesus said okay today i am telling you you shall be with me in my kingdom that is the exact reply here the translators are beautifully you see huh, manipulated the scriptures dear brethren so that we can get a wrong interpretation of the scriptures but uh, you see the bible is its own dictionary aha uh -huh, uh, we have the answers everything from the bible uh, you see any question should be asked from the bible answer should be sought only from the bible okay now why so special favor to the thief when nobody comforted thief comforted now what is you say do you have such rewards yes we have such rewards jesus said huh what did jesus say if anybody gives one small cup of water to drink you shall have the reward read matthew 10:42 matthew 10:42 and so uh, who so over shall give to drink unto one of this little ones of cold water only in the name of a disciple verily i say unto you he shall in no wise lose his reward ha ah, you see who server shall give to drink uh, unto one of these little ones a cup of water you see ha uh, in the name of a disciple they shall have the reward if they give water for disciples only if they have reward if somebody speaks comforting words to jesus will he not have a reward yes he will have a reward not that he will be taken to heaven you see heavenly salvation is not so easily what did jesus say if any man wants to be my disciple deny yourself carry the cross and follow me where did the disciple uh, conditions were fulfilled by the thief no you see he shall have the reward means when jesus is going to come second coming he shall get some special favor that's all not that he shall be taken to heaven dear brother no no not at all you see imagine how many houses we visit how many places they give us something to eat how many places they give us water to drink in love out of love all all these all these things has to be done they shall have their reward dear brethren this is important the thief never went to heaven okay so everybody are in the grave sleeping nicely only to be resurrected at christ second coming okay read john 528 john 528 read with the please john 528 brother john 528 hmm okay do not be amazed at he at this do not be amazed at this for a time is coming when all who are in their grave will hear his voice okay all that are in the grave hear his voice you see the second coming voice the voice and a shout of an archangel is not heard by the people who are in the graves when they hear when he returns then they will come back first is known yes 416 brother ha huh? first is known 416 brother ha huh? sorry first is known yes 